with me today, I have Al Costanzo. He is a parishioner at the Cathedral of St. Joseph, an artist and an art teacher. Um, welcome, Al. Yeah, thanks, Renee. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah. Happy to be here. Uh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> um, so we, you were recommended to me to come on the show by Jeff and Lois Heron, who were recently on the show. Um, I floated your name around the chancery and said, hey, anybody know this guy? Are we okay? They're like, yes, two thumbs up, <laughs> bring Al on. He's got a great story. So, so cool. I'm really glad you decided to come in. And um, so we're gonna talk about your faith journey, um, your art and your work there. And we have a few pieces in the studio. So if you are only listening to this on radio, it's probably one of those you're going to want to jump on YouTube to come see if you have, if you think Al is interesting enough, which I think he will be. <laughs> All right. So, Al, if you're ready, we will get started. Yeah, absolutely. Will you first tell us a little bit about yourself, just in general, if you would? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, I'm a guy from Sioux Falls. Uh, I grew up here, went to public school, uh, small family, just my brother, my parents, and I. Extended family live in different parts of the Midwest, so we didn't get okay. to see them a whole lot. Uh, and uh, faith uh, for us at that point was just kind of going to mass on Sunday sure. and uh, CCD in, uh, in, the, uh, in the evenings, Wednesday, mm -hmm. Wednesday night. Uh, A typical, normal Catholic yeah, upbringing. Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, so I've lived in a lot of other parts of the country, okay. but I keep coming back to Sioux Falls. There's this, you know, something about this place. You know, it's, it's home for me. Yeah. And this is like where I'm at. Yeah. I'm it's saying, funny so. how that happens. You kind of travel around and you're like, man, South Dakota is kind of all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. So right now um, I live uh, in the Cathedral District okay. um, with my 17-year-old dog, Darcy. <laughs> Oh boy, seventeen-year-old dog. Yeah, you said dog, right? Not yep. daughter. Dog. <laughs> dog. Yes, dog. <laughs> yep. Yeah, she's alive. Last I checked. So. <laughs> Earlier today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Okay, so you just started a little bit about your faith journey. Uh, how did you, you? You're obviously more than just a Sunday Catholic, and you know, the, something happened yeah. along the way. So, can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, absolutely. So, um, like I said. Uh, my religious education was basically CCD Wednesday nights and then kind of whatever we got in the pews mm -hmm. on Sundays. Um, and, you know, I've come to realize that CCD really is, is meant to supplement what's already happening in the home. All right. the teaching was already happening in the home. Um, and for us, um, you know, we learned the virtues, we learned responsibilities, but Christ really wasn't the center of our lives. Sure. Um, for me, it was more, you know, Super Mario was at the center of my life. <laughs> Super Mario. That, yeah. that dates you in a particular spot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm a 90s kid. <laughs> I'm definitely a 90s kid. Uh, so I went to college at SDSU and mm -hmm. um, just kind of fell away from the church. Um, looking back, you know, they have such an active Newman Center up there. And I yes. really wish that I just kind of walked across the campus yeah. to find them. But um, that just wasn't part of part of my uh, my perspective at the mm -hmm. time. Uh, so I uh, graduated there with a degree in uh, art education and studio art. Okay. And uh, went on to get a job at Roosevelt High School. So I was uh, teaching kids there, uh, you know, things that I had learned from uh, my own practice and things. You know, I was just uh, really excited to share these skills with people that helped them grow and realize that, you know, your skill set now isn't the skill set you can have at the end. Right. And, you know, uh, felt really, really good about myself, uh, and, you know, the work that I was doing. Um, I was really grateful for my job and my house and my car and everything that I had, but I just felt a little unfulfilled. Sure. You know, when you're, we you don't have a, a, a real bigger goal bigger than yourself. Yeah. Um, so uh, I was a guy in my, you know, mid 20s at the time, kind of going through a little bit of a quarter life crisis. And, <laughs> quarter life crisis. Okay. Uh, yeah. So then you, <laughs> you, you just make a drastic change. You do. So, uh, yeah. So what I did was I just gave away everything, uh, shipped my old dog over to my parents' house. Really? And, uh, packed a suitcase and moved to New York City oh my God. to join a uh, classical academic art studio. Okay. Um, I'd found out about them through uh, some publications, and uh, I just couldn't believe that people were still making art uh, in this style. So right. uh, I said goodbye to you know, everyone I knew here and moved out there. And um, actually, before I left, I got some unexpected advice from my dad uh, because He's worried about me. I'm moving far away. There's not going to be friends, <laughs> family City. around. Yeah. Um, and he said something just kind of really unexpectedly out of the blue. He said, remember, you'll always have the church. And I thought, huh, okay, that's, that's, it's going to stick with me. Mm -hmm. um, Especially coming from your dad. 
Right. Well, yeah. I mean, we're we're faithful Sunday Catholics. Right. We're there right. every Sunday, um, but we didn't really talk about it right. a whole lot. Um, so to hear that was it was kind of a kind of an eye opener, but mm-hmm. um, it stuck with me. So anyway, I get to New York. Um, I'm I'm loving life. Uh, you know, the big city. You know, Midwest kid. Um, I moved into my 80 square foot <laughs> single room <laughs> occupancy apartment. Oh, wow. Yeah, you walk in the door. Eight feet this way, ten feet that way. That's all. I, that's all oh you got. Oh my gosh! There's a bed and a closet, so it's essentially a closet inside of a closet. Right. Which is where I was living. <laughs> um, but I was on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Um, I was five blocks away from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Wow. You know, one oh. of the greatest art museums mm-hmm. in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and my bike ride to my art school was down Fifth Avenue along Central Park um, to Midtown Manhattan where uh, my school was right next door to uh, the Grand Central Station. Mm-hmm. So it's called the Grand Central Atelier. Okay. That was where I attended uh, full-time for three years. Um, and chance would have it, it's it's right around the corner from the great St. Patrick's Cathedral. Uh, I was wondering if you are going to say that. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I'm, yeah, just loving life, I'm taking everything in that the city has to offer, learning everything I can from my school. Uh, but eventually, the charm wears off, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, routine sets in, and you know the seasons are changing. It's October at this point, and uh, you know, I I keep coming back to my my little closet apartment <laughs> with really nothing but my thoughts and the cockroaches, you know, to oh. <laughs> keep me company. Uh, I'm not sure which is worse, right? The thoughts or the cockroaches? I know, yeah, it can get kind of dark, but. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, so uh, it was, one night I was the last one at the studio. It was probably 6 o'clock. I'm packing up. And the last place I wanted to go was back to my apartment. Uh, so I uh, turned the lights off, head out the door, and um, you know, just kind of going to walk around the city. And right in front of me is St. Patrick's. So I say, okay, God, uh, I remember what my dad told me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you always have the church. So I, I walked in the doors. You know, it takes a little bit of point, a courage. Yeah, to this point, had you been going to Mass? No, not at all. Okay. No, okay. not at all. Um, you know, and, and people tell me that about the cathedral here. They say, yeah. you know, it's a little intimidating. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, St. Patrick's was that. Definitely. I bet it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's evening. I walk in the doors. Um, no, you know, sun's going down outside, and the lights are real dim inside. And uh, the uh, huge vaulted ceilings. So dim, you can't see to the top of these impossible wow. high ceilings. Yeah. Um, Everything, you know, is just kind of shadowed in mystery, you know. There are a few faithful parishioners there, and it turns out it's this, this is uh, an evening daily mass. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I just stumbled into it. <laughs> um, and, you know, at that point, I didn't even realize that Catholics celebrated mass every day. Uh, so I sit down in the back, and uh, the thing that was most impressive for me, not the architecture, um, although that was fantastic, but it was actually the priest. I couldn't tell you his name, but... Um, his reverence, number one, and his intelligence, number two, just blew me away. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I left there, and I'd love to be able to tell you that I ended up, you know, registering. I never missed another Mass. But in actuality, I only went a handful more times. Sure. Um, but what it left me with was um, kind of a, an eye-opening experience, new appreciation for this Catholic faith, because I'd never heard uh, a priest give a Ph.D. lecture for a homily before. That's right. basically what I experienced. Right. So anyway, um, the next step in my faith journey wasn't necessarily at the church, like I said, but it was actually getting to know uh, my fellow art students at the school. Oh, okay. So uh, this is the Grand Central Atelier. It's one of the top two or three places in the world mm-hmm. to learn how to do this art skill. So mm-hmm. think um, Leonardo Mona Lisa, artists like Caravaggio, sure. Rembrandt, Velasquez. Uh, these are techniques that are kind of lost to time, and we're trying to just kind of revive them now. But mm-hmm. um, this Grand Central Atelier is one of the one of the spots uh, that you can still do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this attracts a, a pretty unique type of artist, and it turns out that a lot of them are charismatic Christians. Sure. So in the middle of New York City, I get to know all these charismatic Christians, and you know their idea is to try to uh, try to represent the beauty of God's creation in oil on canvas, right? In oil paint on canvas. Right. Um, and so through conversations with these people, you know, over coffee and cocktails over a couple of years, uh, I come to know Christ mm-hmm. uh, and what the cross means for us and for our salvation. Uh, and that's something, you know, growing up, I just never put together, mm-hmm. you know, 
he seemed like a good teacher. He seemed, you know, like um, he got a bad deal. Uh, <laughs> but that was kind of the extent of it for me. Right. Uh, but these people really opened my eyes to that. Yeah. So uh, they planted the seeds for my Catholic reversion. Right. But they wouldn't really bloom until I moved back to Sioux Falls. Okay. Um, so at this point, I'm out of money in New York, and I'm pretty much out of love with the city. <laughs> you know, it just kind of wears on you yeah. after a while, and you start thinking, man, that Sioux, pl- that Sioux Falls place is pretty nice. <laughs> it might be big enough for me. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, so then I ended up, uh, yeah, getting the call to come back home. Um, there happened to be an opening at Roosevelt High School in the art department again. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, here, here, this, this is what I'm, this is what I'm, what I'm supposed to do. Uh, so I, I was able to come back to essentially the, the old job that I had before, uh, but this time with a new skill set, right. uh, you know, academic uh, drawing and painting skills, and uh, kind of a new perspective on my faith, mm-hmm. a new, new open-mindedness towards yeah. my faith. So my goal at the time was to repackage this classical academic training for high schoolers. And uh, that's really cool. Yeah. And I think the kids really took to it. I mean, I, I know for sure that a lot of them demonstrated a, like a whole lot of improvement and a lot of success. Yeah. But as tends to be the case, the students taught the teacher more <laughs> than the teacher taught the students. Yeah. Uh, so what I ended up doing was just kind of observing behaviors mm-hmm. uh, and actions and consequences through my new sort of faith lens. Right. And uh, what I realized is that these young people... You know, they need rules and they need structure. We adults need rules and structure. Mm-hmm. We need traffic lights or else, you know, the, yeah, yeah. the roads are chaos. Sometimes it still is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's false drivers, yeah, for sure. Uh, and there are objective rights and wrongs. Right. Okay. Uh, hello, uh, commandments. Mm-hmm. Right? So uh, I'm comparing my observations with what I'm learning about church teaching, and I'm seeing that it all lines up. I'm, I'm amazed. Mm-hmm. There, is, uh, there, is, there is rationality to the faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as a guy in my, at that point, early 30s, this, uh, this is really impactful. Right. Uh, and what I learned is that the church is right about all their social teachings. Mm-hmm. And I could prove it through the behavior of my students. Uh, so then I thought to myself, wow, if all this stuff that, that I can observe is true, then all these sacred mysteries uh, must be true, too. Mm-hmm. And that's where I really received the gift of faith. Yeah. And it was just kind of a powerful uh, point in my life. And and really, from then on, it's just been faith-seeking understanding. Right. Uh, so right. I'm doing everything I can. I've got a, a real strong sense of joy and peace oh, good. over the last five or six years. Right. You know, since this, this reversion has happened for me. Yeah. Um, and along with the joy and peace is, is the desire to want to share this with, uh, with as many people as possible, share Christ with as many right. people as possible. Right. Yeah, this is really a... a this is a very good example of missionary discipleship that people don't even know they're being missionary disciples. The charismatic Christians that you knew in New York, that is a, that is a like textbook example of missionary discipleship. They're walking with you. You're learning from them. You're in relationship and in friendship. This is what we're talking about in the diocese is, is developing missionary discipleship that way Uh because that's the way it, it works the best. So it's, it's beautiful to hear you tell that story and super important right now. Yeah. So sure. you have, um, I want to talk a little bit about your art. Did we miss anything? No. I, okay. That, that okay. I want to make sure we get to your art. So you, Al brought a few pieces here with him and you have several different things, but you mm-hmm. have in particular, mm-hmm. yes, a icon. Yeah. Can you talk about this a little bit, how you decided, how you got to this point and about what you're doing now. Yeah, definitely. So this type of artwork, uh, Eastern sacred iconography, is something that I did not understand as a, as a student in New York, learning how to uh, draw and paint to a degree of realism that's more real than a photograph. You know, right. this is nothing like a photograph. Right. Uh, and and it's know, not supposed to be. Right, yeah. Well, and they say you can't love what you don't know. And right. I, didn't, I didn't know what this was. I didn't love it. Right. Um, uh, to me, it looked like figures drawn by people who didn't have uh, didn't have the training. But <laughs> right. um, through study and research and other people being like, hey, you know, they keep putting this in front of me. They sh- you should look at this. Um, I come to realize that, no, there is a system here, uh, a system of representation. And this is not how we see each other, but this is, this is our spiritual likeness. This is how God sees us. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's more important. 
mm-hmm. than, than how we see each other. Uh, and then I, I came to learn more of the, the symbolism and uh, mm-hmm. every line and every layer has meaning. Okay. Um, the, the, the modeled color in there uh, has to do with kind of the raw creation and the lines are, are designed to control the creation. Uh, think of, again, the commandments. Okay. They, they give purpose and, and function and uh, organization beauty to what we do. Right. Uh, the colors have things that they represent, the gestures, the uh, accessories, the clothing. These are all uh, important aspects of right. iconography. Um, and so I, again, as, I assume if we, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. I assume if we want to know more about that, we can probably do some Googling and find out. Oh, yeah. Like it's what all, all of these things mean and how yeah. how to understand an icon. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, you'll be, yeah, you'll be blown away. I mean, yeah. it, it, you can't know it all. <laughs> uh, and the actual creation of this is a prayer in itself. Right. You know, every different layer. So right. anyway, yeah, you're right. You, you can do all the research you yeah. want. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's not an image of the saint, but it's an encounter with the saint. Okay. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, so then you also have a couple other pieces here. This one in particular, Al, if you want to, I don't know if you can yeah. hold that up just a little bit. Yeah. So this one is from a this confirmation. From, yeah. Confirmation of Easter Vigil uh, this past Easter yeah. at the cathedral. Um, you probably recognize some of the characters if you're Bishop local. Bishop DeGrood, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is watercolor portrait, uh, multi-figure um, based on uh, just this really beautiful moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the symmetry mm-hmm. in the image. Uh, the colors, beautiful. Yeah, just uh, is that Deacon Radio. Deacon Radio <laughs> over here, Father Tony. <laughs> oh sure, in yeah. Here as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. Anyway, I'm having fun, kind of getting out of uh, out of my traditional modes yes. and trying trying some new yes. new things. Getting into watercolor. I'm doing more uh, watercolor landscapes these days too. Uh, watercolor portraits. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, but oil paint is kind of the direction. Yeah. That, uh, that and so this is yeah this is another one um is this recent Older. um well yeah within the last handful of years sure for sure um so this is the type of academic training that we got in new york so it's all oh, okay. about very carefully rendering the three-dimensional form thinking, thinking about local color and then thinking about how uh, the light moves across that surface and what it does to the way that we see that color sure yeah uh, so, yeah, the light on it is really great on the face, especially. Right, those warm, yeah. uh, uh, luminous shadows. Yep. Really, what drew me to the the the, the artwork. Yeah. Got another one over here. Brought this one in just as kind of a contrast. Oh yeah. I don't know if there's a glare on that or not, uh, but uh, eventually, yeah, this is this is the the direction that I want to really focus on primarily. Mm-hmm. But combining aspects of everything, the looseness of the watercolor. The symbolism of the iconography yep. and um, the, the realism of the yeah, this oil portraits. Yeah, this is beautiful. I, I love this one. It's very, it is almost photograph-like right now. So at least in my mind. Yeah, oh, here. yeah, that's, that's the idea. Well, the, the photo we take as, as an example of, you know, reality, but, um, you know, really the, the camera is a lens that we're looking at reality through. Mm-hmm. Um, you're looking at a painting. I'm the lens. I'm the, I'm, I'm the one yeah. who's interpreting reality. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we don't have a ton of time left, but I there is a question here I really do want to ask for you. I want you to answer. So why does beauty, yeah. especially in the form of art, matter, especially for faith and for, for our lives? The best example that we have is our cathedral over yeah. here. Um, you know, Emmanuel Masqueré is the, the, the creator mm-hmm. of this gorgeous thing. And we, we see that it has systems and um, like in symmetry, there's patterns that represent uh, an intelligent designer, Masqueray. Mm-hmm. Uh, Emmanuel Masqueray was the designer. Uh, we see that in nature also. We see beautiful structures that uh, St. Thomas would tell us, you know, implies a creator. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, beauty is, it's an objective good. Um, you know, a lot of people will tell us that, you know, culture will tell us that it's in the eye of the beholder. Well, St. Thomas will say not so fast. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. There are three pillars, three qualifiers that we can look at, wholeness, harmony, and radiance, yes. to determine whether something is beautiful. And you can run through these checks and you say, oh, okay, this does have merit. You know, think about yeah. a beautiful choir singing. Yes. You know, it has to have all of the components, all the levels, all the strata of the singers. They have to be working in harmony, and it has to uh, touch you. you know, right. It has to have some truth to it. It speaks to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the same thing could be true for novels or artworks mm-hmm. uh, architecture yeah. architecture yep. yeah. all of those definitely things. Yeah. yeah and and so it's, it's beauty that lifts us up to yeah uh, yeah lifts us up to a creator right. uh, 
points us to, to God. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, okay. So you have recently, you're recently shifting gears exactly. here a little bit. So yeah. before we go, will you tell us what you're doing now and how people can maybe reach out to you if they want to, anything like that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so yeah, I, I've stepped away from the full-time uh, art teacher, high school art teaching, mm -hmm. and I am uh, working primarily now as a sacred artist. Um, not limited to sacred art. I'll do landscapes. I'll sure. do uh, portraits of uh, people, children. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, working it, uh, out of my home studio, uh, like I said, oil, egg tempera, I, do, I still do icons, uh, and I am doing a little bit of teaching as well. Mm -hmm. um, so if anybody's interested in learning how to do this, reach out to me. Um, or if you're interested in, um, you know, you got if you have an idea for an artwork that you'd like to run by me. Um, oh yeah, potentially commission. Idea. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, best way to reach me is through my website. It's just alcostanzo.com. Yep. We'll um, put that in the um, uh, the description on good. YouTube. Too. Yeah, you'll see more examples of my work, and um, you'll get you know pieces of this bio, uh, as well as uh, any links to any workshops or. Uh, newsletters, things like good. that. Good. 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 Yeah. Thank you so much for coming in, yeah, Al. Thanks, I really man. appreciate it. I didn't know you till now, but um, a very good story. I'm really glad we had you come in. Sure. Yeah. Thanks anytime. So thanks a lot. Yep. Thank you. All right. If you haven't found us on social media yet, you can find us at uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, always at SF Diocese on any of those. That's it for us today. Hope you'll join us again next week for more Catholic Views.